Hey guys, I'm JK Ultra. I know it's been a minute since I posted a YouTube video like this, but today I wanted to share with you the craziest things that I learned from becoming a QHHT practitioner. So QHHT is a style of hypnosis that was created by Dolores Cannon. If you follow my work, then you know, I am a huge fan of Dolores Cannon and I'm very familiar with the information that came through, through her QHHT method. And that inspired me to learn it myself. Also, as someone who, when you're seeing all of that information come through, I was resonating with it, but I wanted to really like make sure that it was real. So for me, I wanted to learn how to do the method. As I've stated before, just want to make it clear, I don't do sessions as a QHHT practitioner. So I don't do sessions. I don't have like booking or scheduling openings um, obviously if anyone ever like messages you about that i would not do that um, i wouldn't reach out but i also don't even do readings or sessions so that's more of something that i've only done personally and it's been something um you know i don't know if i'll ever do it as a business but i actually did do it to a lot of people that i know and i asked for their permission if i could share their experiences because it was mind-blowing for everybody involved and thankfully some of them said yes and they are super 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 interesting so um let's begin so qhht as we know is a style of hypnosis that you yes do experience a past life most of the time but then as you go through the death in that life, you actually move instead of just to the spirit world, you move into your higher self, into your subconscious mind, where you have access to all of the information in the universe, as well as everything that you've ever experienced, past, present, future, sideways, parallel, as a soul. So, the first time that I ever put someone under hypnosis was my ex-boyfriend. Now, I have alluded to him on this page before. Um, actually, like today to like the day is when like a lot of the whole possession story went down. Um, so, I mean, one, just reflecting on that today really makes me feel like, wow, my entire life has changed. And even though that was like scary, uh, it was... I wouldn't be where I am right now. I would still probably be in that relationship and I wouldn't be here sharing all of this information that I love so much that I never thought I was going to connect with so many people over. So that said, he was my first uh, hypnosis subject, which was such a mind blowing experience from the first time that I did it. And I have heard from other QHHT practitioners that in the beginning, you do get pretty lucky like that and have a lot of really cool sessions early on. Um, I don't know if that's because, you know, the universe kind of wants you to lean into it or because, you know, those interesting people in your life are the most willing to do that type of session. But anyway, so when he goes under, I was kind of like not sure if it was going to work, but like you also know because you believe that it works. So, but I was a little scared that it might have not. Uh, so when he went to, okay, so like, you know, you go through the whole process, there's like, you know, visualization and you go on a cloud and then the cloud leads you somewhere and your subconscious mind, like the words, it's basically a lot of like NLP that's involved too, neuro linguistics programming, because it kind of like coaxes your mind to like release and then you just start to describe the images that come to your mind. So usually when you are doing a, as a practitioner, the first thing you really want to do once you kind of get people where they start like experiencing something where they're more of an observer as opposed to visualizing when they come off the cloud or when they find themselves somewhere, you have them look at their feet. And then from their feet, they start to kind of come become more into that body and into that experience. And they can kind of like see and feel and smell the things more. So you start with the feet. Now with him, he was in like this grassy area. Like, I think he said it looked similar to like Vermont, you know, with like tall trees, wooded area. And so basically he was telling me that he lives in a, a community and 
I'm like, oh, okay. And you know, you want to kind of gently get information about, well, what do you do? You know, where is your house? Can we go to your house? What do you do in a regular day? Who are some people around? Do you communicate? And you just kind of like gently get the information out of them. And when you ask certain questions, their mind will bring them there. Um, like, you know, sometimes if you ask, you're like, oh, well, do you live near here? And then they're like, you know, because they're in a very receptive state, they're like, no, you know, I live down the road actually. And you're like, oh, can we go there? I'm like, sure, let's go. And so for him, it was very interesting because he was talking about this community and he was kind of saying that he was almost like a kind of like a sheriff ranger guy, but he wasn't really like law. It was kind of like the community's own law man, like man who basically watched over things, dealt with some nature stuff that would be like a park ranger, but for a community. And I'm like, okay, okay, great. Well, what is this community like? And I'm assuming this is a past life, mind you. Why wouldn't it be a past life? That's kind of what people are supposed to experience. And this is my first time ever doing it. And they say that like, whatever, I mean, I think it's less now, but it used to be like most people experience a past life. Now people experience all different types of things um, just because the souls are more advanced than they were when Dolores first started that method. But then he starts talking about like, oh yeah, and now I'm driving back to the main, air, the main camp area. I'm like, oh, you're driving. He's like, yeah, I have a dog in the car with me. I love the dog. And I'm like, hmm, he has a car. And I'm like, well, this must be a pretty recent past life then if there was cars. And I ask more questions. And then he's like, yeah, well, you know, we do have technology. We have cell phones and stuff, but like we don't really use most of the technology. It's pretty limited. Um, and I'm like, oh, you have that type of technology. Well, what type of community is this? Who lives there? Um, how does people get to this community? And I'm just thinking this is like a village in like, I don't know, the 1950s or 60s or something, just my assumptions, but without saying those assumptions. So I'm still asking those questions, pulling the information out of him. And he then says, oh yeah, we built this community. It's off grid. And I was part of the people who founded it because, and then he starts saying that he invented a new form of electricity. And I'm like, wow, what's this new form of electricity? Like, I don't know what I'm thinking it's going to be. I'm thinking something from the past. And he's like, well, it's like a battery, but not like those lithium batteries they used back in the day. And then I'm like, and his eyes are closed, so he can't see my facial expressions. He's laying on my moon pod that I have right here. Um, and I'm like, the lithium batteries they used back in the day, they use lithium batteries today. So I start like kind of creeping around some other information. I'm like, well, who are you there with? What type of people are there? And then he says that we moved to an important day of the life and he has to leave the community. I'm like, well, why would you leave? You seem like such a big member of the community. Why would you go? And he's like, well, you know, me and my wife had an issue. And I'm like, well, why don't you tell her to leave? And he's like, I can't tell her to leave. She's her own person. I can't make a decision for her. And I'm like, damn, this really isn't a past life. This is a future life. Oh shit. <laughs> Um, but I'm containing my excitement, um, which is the thing that's always crazy with these hypnosis sessions is that you get super excited as like information comes through. Cause I'm like, oh my God, he's literally regressing into a future life. I'm so freaking excited. I've never done this before. And I'm like, how do you move someone through the death of a future life that they haven't experienced yet? But I'm like, how do I get to the subconscious mind? But I just like, you know, trusted the process and, you know, stuck to what I learned. and. Basically, he has an issue with his wife, and I asked what the issue was. Now, at the time of this session, him and I were in an actual relationship, so that is a little bit a uh, conflict of interest there. And so he starts crying, and 
he's like with his eyes closed, starts crying and he sits up, opens his eyes. And then he's like, closes them and goes back down. And then he sits up and opens them like he wants to get up. And I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. Everything's fine here, you know? And I like kind of coax him back down. And I didn't know, like, you know, even though we, you know, were taught, I didn't really know it. <laughs> they say like, sometimes if people kind of try to get up, in that way, a lot of times it's better to kind of count them out when they get up, not just like let people bump, jump up like that after they've kind of gone into that hypnotic state. Um, so I didn't want to just let him jump up and then not. Um, but then also, too, I figure that's something that this is why you practice. And so basically, he says that he has to leave the community, but then he goes to like, a regular community. And he basically kind of described something that sounds like Santa Monica in California, like basically kind of like a high end, uh, beach town city in like a populated area. And he had a lot of money because he invented this type of technology. So he had enough money to have like a really nice apartment. Uh, but he was said that after that, he was just so lonely because he never really found that community again. And when he went back into the regular world, uh, that there was no sense of community, that everything was so lonely. And he said, even though he would go and I'm like, well, is there nice stuff where you are? Maybe it's, uh, you need somewhere else to move to. And he's like, no, it's a perfect town. It's great. He's like, there's nice spots for brunch, but it's just that there's no real community in the way that I had when I lived with, you know, this other community. And so that was really interesting. So then after someone moves through that process, we didn't move him through the death because um, I tried, but he kind of just kept moving to different days of the life. So I started moving him then to his um, higher self without the death process. And the first thing you ask their higher self is why did the subconscious mind choose to show this person this life today, because you have all of these different things. Even if you haven't lived these past lives, you have access to all of the lives in the Akashic records. So your subconscious mind could show you any past life. Why did you choose that one today? And what he said was because a decision is coming up and he needs to make the right decision. And I'm like, oh, like, what is this decision? And there's, they said, like, he will know what the decision is. Now, a side note from that, fast forward, that was in the year 2020 when we did that session um, last year, exactly a year ago now, like today, um, we had been, we broke up. And when we went through that breakup, I have... Thankfully, I'm very grateful that I have a really good community of people who are spiritual, uh, like-minded, open-minded, artist, creative, amazing people. I have great people in my life. I'm very lucky. And he had kind of come into my friend group and, you know, his friends, I guess were all a secret, were the people he was cheating on me with and lying and with behind my back. So I, I can't say he didn't really have his own friend group. I'm sure he did. Those were the people he was, you know, doing his stuff with. Uh, the secretive stuff that I didn't know about, the second life. But in the main life of his life, that I have, the one that I was experiencing with him, um, we had a really great community going of, you know, people who I was close with. And when he came into my life, became a part of, and we really did have like that type of community going before everything came to a head. I felt like all of me and my friends and everyone were at a super charged peaking moment of like spiritual experiences, like almost getting to the point, like, dude, are we all going fucking crazy right now? What's going on? And then that's when everything uh, hit the fan, you know, the, the cheating, the lying, the possession, the energy work while being possessed, doing all of the, just craziness, literal horror movie nightmare situation, which turned out to be beautiful in the end because I'm so happy with where my life is right now. Um, so, you know, going through those trenches, but 
that's the thing too. You'll always come out on the other side. Don't ever feel like there's every, anything is that bad because the things are that bad. But I promise you, if you allow it, you can have incredible, incredible things that you never even dreamed that you would ever do in your life. Like for me, being able to like share information about the things that I'm passionate about and have it be well received by so many people and just receive so many messages from people saying like, you helped me, you helped my spiritual awakening. Like that's something even more than I dreamed of for myself. So it really did take a whole crazy demonic possession, horrible breakup, freaking nightmare to get there. Um, and I wouldn't be here today. So when that all went down, a friend of mine pointed it out to me. She said, oh my God, his hypnosis session of the future life. It's so symbolic to what's going on now because he was in this spiritual community. And these are people that I want to build a physical community with. I want to build an off-grid community with these people. So when that came through in his hypnosis, and at that point in 2020, we hadn't really discussed it. Um, it was really after his hypnosis that I was like, wow, my dreams of creating a community and him showing me a future life that it really exists that made me dive into a lot of the stuff that I share now about these future communities. And I feel very passionate about it because it was my first experience with QHHT with my partner at the time that he's the one who told me about that future life that he was experiencing. And that really solidified it for me. And after he had that experience, I was like, okay, I'm 100% in on like this future that I've been secretly thinking of. Now I really want this. And when everything went down and the last time that I had like spoke to him, uh, I was like, wow, you know, my friend pointed it out and I wanted to point it out to you that the future life that you experienced where you had this amazing spiritual community and something happened between you and your wife, and then you had to leave the community. You were forced out in a way is what ended up happening. And I wonder if that decision that he had to make that was coming up was some of those things, was some of the lies and betrayal. So thank God I have notes. Um, yeah. So that also just makes me think one of the things that I just didn't get to mention about this is about future life or parallel life or sim symbolism for what was happening because um pretty sure at that time was the cheating had already started at that time in 2020 it had been going on there was so much going on like i said i'm not going to tell the full story of the possession and everything because i don't want to scare you guys like literally it will probably sit with you and i don't want to do that to anyone but as far as the stuff that also happened in regular 3D life, um, a lot of that, I'm sure that cheating and stuff had happened and had already been going on by the time that we did that QHHT session together. I don't know how you could be so intimate and open with someone in even a non-sexual way, so intimate to most personal things, to your future life, to these things and to lie and do all that. But you know, there's karmic lessons and all this stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So then the, probably the most exciting of all the sessions that I did was on one of my friends. And now this is the reason why I did this video. When I was doing my soul series on TikTok, um, I did do one part about fairies and um, nature spirits and elementals and all that. And at the end of that video, I said, one of my friends, when I put her under hypnosis, we found out that she's a fairy. And a bunch of people in the comments were like, whoa, what? I need to hear more about this because I might be one. <laughs> and which after this, I do believe many people are fairies, actually. So, okay, this is the crazy thing. So this is my friend. She's very fairy-like. She's very into fairies. She looks like one. She kind of moves and dresses and acts like one. And I just love her. She's one of my favorite people on earth. And so when we put her under hypnosis, um, and this was also a bit earlier on in our friendship. It was also in the year 2020. We'd been friends, but this was really like when we got to know each other on a very deep, 
deep level. So the thing that was so interesting is, okay, so same thing, you know, they go into this, like you walk them through, they kind of, their subconscious mind brings them somewhere. And then you have them start to describe the place, to see their feet, to kind of get into the body, experience the things. So she was in a place also in the woods, um, a wooded area. And I'm like trying to get out, like, what do your feet look like? Things like that. Like kind of trying to get her to describe what type of body she's in. Um, most likely it's human. But once again, like I told you, like I didn't have a normal experience. So the first person I did went to a future life, which little did I know was going to be my future life. <laughs> I was going to be the one uh, in the future that was like whatever betrayed, but stayed with the community. And so this other session that I had done was so, okay. She kind of can't describe her feet. So then, um, I kind of, I'm like getting her to describe other things. And she's like, I don't know. I can't see it, but I just feel like there was a crash. And I'm like, what do you mean a crash? And she's like, well, I don't know. I felt like maybe, is it a plane crash? No, it's not a plane crash. She's like, I don't know. I just felt like we, I, I was flying and now I'm not like I crashed. And then she's, and her voice changed during this, like became very small and cute. And she has a very cute voice as it is, but it became very small and cute. And she then starts saying like, oh, oh, it's me. And starts like giggling, so cute. She's like, he, 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 oh, oh, it's me. <laughs> and I'm like, it's weird to have someone like pretty much change in that way. But it's like really exciting too. And what's crazy is every time I did one of these QHHD sessions and it would start going, my leg, and I don't know if you could see from this angle, my leg would like literally start shaking and their eyes are closed. So they can't see it happening. But what would be crazy is like my legs would start shaking during, and I don't know if it was like I was excited or if it's like some type of frequency coming through, like maybe the frequency coming through their body from their higher self, I could feel it. But it was crazy. Like every single time, like I would literally start like, but then trying, and also you do it with a mic. Um, now I have this little wireless one, but, um, before that I would like, you know, do the mic back and forth, um, to record it for them. So, and I do have all of these recordings, but you know, that was not the permission that I asked for was to play the recordings. No, just to summarize parts of their sessions. So, okay. So then she's like, starts giggling and realizing she's like, oh, it's me. I realized that I can just expand my chest and I'm the one that can fly. I'm the one that crashed. And she's laughing. She's like, oh, I fell, but I didn't get hurt. She's like, oh, this is so funny. So I'm like, you can fly? And she's like, yeah, I can fly. And I'm like, well, where are you? And she's basically just describing like a wooded area on earth. And I don't know if I directly asked, like, is this earth? But then she's like, starts telling me that there is humans and the humans are around. They just can't really see her, but she can see them. And I'm like, well, what do the humans do? She's like, oh, they do all types of things. She's like, but they're so dense. Oh my God. She's like, the humans, they don't know how to have fun. The humans don't know how to do this. And I'm like, oh, you don't like the humans very much? She's like, it's not that I don't like them. She's like, I like their food. And I'm like, well, what type of food do you like? Like, this is just like, crazy experience, you know, to be having in this way with someone who's my friend in real life too, and would not say a story like this. <laughs> and so then she's like, well, I really love the, the cheese and the wine. Sometimes when they have cheese and wine, we sneak and get them. And I'm like, you guys steal the cheese and wine. She's like, oh, all the time. And how funny is that? Right? Like, just really random stuff. So we get to the point that oh, I'm officially like realizing like, okay, she's a fairy on this earth. And I ask about it and she says, yeah. And so what was really interesting though, is that when she was talking about herself, 
the person that I know in this life, she kept referring to it because like, okay, most of the other sessions, they refer to it as she or him or, you know, like their pronouns, you know, and sorry to break it to you guys. I haven't heard anyone get any like strange pronouns. There's pretty normal pronouns that come through from the um, subconscious mind. But I don't know. Who knows what that's <laughs> – maybe I just haven't experienced it. And But with this person, she didn't – like like when I did it, I was saying like she this, she doesn't this. You know, it wasn't I. But with her – she said her human every single time she referred to her body now she says yeah that's how she is when she's in her human oh and her human would like those things her human loves objects that are so cute and small and that comes from like weird things like that and it always kept saying when she's in her human or her human and i'm like when like i and i asked like well when you say her human like kind of what do you mean and this is what blew my mind is she basically described to me that her human, she says that because it's a projection, that it's, she's not actually a human. She's never been a human. She's not a human now. She is a fairy projecting a human image into our reality. And she's experiencing this as a human avatar, but that she's not a human. She's never been a human. Um, this is only her second lifetime playing this human role, the first lifetime. And so now this was really interesting. That's how we got into, um, that's how we got into her past life, her past life before this one. So basically she said, as a fairy, sometimes they would help the humans, but mostly they stayed away. And then she said something like war was going on. So I don't know what time frame this was. She said there was war going on and there was like villages that were outside of the forest. And, you know, they distantly knew the people, not like personally, but they knew of the people who lived on the land near there. And when those people were getting attacked in some type of like weird, like airstrike stuff, there was stuff like coming from the sky. And when she knew that was happening, her and a bunch of the other, her fairy family, she says her real family of fairies were moving to another place when this started happening. And as they were passing over, she looked down. Oh my God, I have such goosebumps. She looked down and saw that these humans that she had had some idea of um were in distress and she said that she was flying over and she saw and she just couldn't leave them that way and she knew that they would have no light after that and she's like i need to go down and help them so she went and projected herself as a human to help them and came into their that environment at that time to help those people transition away from that village or whatever and she became so invested in the human's suffering that she got sucked down into it and basically got like pulled into karma so she wasn't even supposed to and her family left her fairy family continued on she was the only one from the family who stopped and was like oh my god i need to help those people and then she became so invested in playing this role as like the human and their suffering and absorbing their problems that now she's incarnating as a human and i was like whoa first of all i never even heard that in like a dolores cannon book but it makes perfect sense to me and the other thing was when it came time to her to choose this life that she's living in this is also really interesting so she said that when she chose this current life it was a similar situation she basically had seen and now she says that she is light and 
when I asked what her purpose was in this life, it was to be the light for other people, to just shine and be light. And that's all she had to do. She just had to be. And she said that when she was choosing this life, it was kind of like a thing where she said, basically she saw her family, her current human family that she's born into in this life, who is not her soul family. It's not connected to her really in that way. Um, although she loves them very much and she's very invested in them and their enrichment of their lives and helping them and all of that. Um, and she's close to them, but she's different than them. And so she saw that her family basically, and it's going to sound crazy. It kind of does sound crazy, had like a curse on them. And she said that there's basically like these beings that have an attachment onto the family. And when she said, once again, same type of thing, she was like passing over and she's light and she saw this family and there was this dark being that was like overshadowing the family. And she was like, oh, all I have to do is shine light down there. And she said that this dark being, she didn't say it's like a bad or evil thing or a demon or anything like that. She said that basically this like dark being is something that she's familiar with. She knows this being or this energy, this entity, whatever, like, I don't know, think of it as like a singular being. It's kind of like an energy, but she said she knows it and she's very familiar with it and she's worked with it before. So it's very easy, would be very easy for her to just go down there and help the family move away from it because um, it's just simple for her. Uh, so it's just interesting that when she was in hypnosis, so now afterwards, you know, she said that she did actually feel that she was a fairy, but she never wanted to say that she never wanted to tell anyone that she was a fairy because she's like, well, that's really weird. I would not feel comfortable saying that. So when she got up, she was like this really just like validated. She said also that she had felt like there was a curse on parts of her family and which is so interesting. So just to kind of wrap that up, she said that basically I was like, well, how does she get rid of the curse? Does she know how to? Is there something she has to do? And they said that the information will come. She does. It's not time yet. And basically she was estranged from her father um, since she was very young. And uh, her father's heritage is indigenous. And she's been, you know, separated from that and that culture uh, since she was a child because she didn't grow up with him present. And she, what was so interesting at the point of this session, she hadn't spoke to her father in so, 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 so long, like decades. And they said that her father needs to basically come into like his power and he's going to connect with his Mayan ancestry. And when he does, he is going to have the information for her to basically free her family from this dark energy that they are connected to, that they want to be free from. What's crazy is that she hadn't talked to her dad in all of that time since then, since 2020, um, he has reached out. Uh, and, he started getting into traditional Mayan dancing and he's basically changed his life, found his heritage. He's involved in these ceremonial dancings. Um, it's not time for all of that information yet, but what's crazy is like there's things that happened in these sessions in 2020 that have kind of already come, started to pull together, which is like crazy to me you know, because they weren't really predictive. They kind of said like the time will come. He needs to get in touch with his roots. And when he gets in touch with his roots, he will gain access to certain information that he'll be able to share, which will bring all the parts together for her. So everything is working together in a very divine way. Okay, so I have another friend that there was a similar situation. So this friend, uh, similar. So when 
she went through her past life. It was a very tragic past life. But when we moved her through the higher self, this was incredible to me. So she's had some spiritual experiences before, mainly with psychedelics. She had also done this type of um, hypnosis before, but she did like the LBL method, um, the Dr. Michael Newton method. And that was with a different person and she had a great experience with it. Now, this was a very different experience for her because she said that her past life, even though it was very tragic, was she didn't feel that emotionally connected to it the way she did in the LBL therapy. But the information that came through was very relevant in her QHHT. So one of the things was, okay, what is your purpose? What is her lessons that she's meant to learn in this life? And now this blew me away. When I asked what lessons she had to learn in this life, it was so beautiful because she said, talking about herself, like I said, people usually refer to themselves um, like they're outside of themselves. And they said, she's not here for in this lifetime to learn any lessons. She's learned her lessons. She's here to be here for other people's lessons. And I was like, whoa, dude. And of course, this is one of my good friends who is like, these are people too, who are in like my spiritual community of friends and, you know, so I know she's about her stuff. She's a master meditator. She's great at manifesting. She's super talented. She's incredible. I worked with her. Um, she's got just a great person. And so what was really interesting is I'm like, oh, well, she doesn't have to learn her lessons. And then basically this information came through and I don't remember what the question was that provoked it, but basically she, okay. They said that there's a fifth dimensional version of herself, which is the true self that she is and that she's here right now, basically projecting herself into this reality as a person, the person she is, to help create this an experience for others. Now, what's interesting is, you know, without giving too much personal information about her, um, she was from another country. She moved to America when she was 16. Um, she's an actor. And obviously, you know, I know a lot of people from different cultures could understand that if you're kind of like one of the only people from your family who gets like the opportunity to come to America and like live the American dream type of thing, um, you don't want them to become an actor. You know, I have a couple friends like this where, you know, uh, they came here and their parents wanted them to be doctors or, you know, lawyers, doctors, things that are respected and guaranteed and can build an empire for the family they don't really want them to go into art now so that's something that she struggled with and she said that in her country growing up um which is el salvador um she said basically that when she was younger she had very much been told like no 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 like don't like basically don't draw attention to yourself don't try to stick out too much um, you know, don't draw too much attention. You might make something bad happen or, um, don't do that. You're taking away the attention from something that's more important. And there was just a lot of like kind of dimming of her light. And that was not something that was like, she said necessarily that it was from her family. She said she felt it from her culture. She felt that there was more so about like, um, just a little bit less about being an individual. And there was in her experience, people were a little bit diminishing of being individuals. And it was more about the whole unit, the whole family, the whole community, the whole thing, the whole culture. And she, you know, wanted to be a performer. That is who she is. She's talented. She's a performer. And that's her personality and the way that she shares her beauty with the world. And so it was very difficult for her. So she definitely dealt with that because it was kind of like, you know, don't draw attention to yourself. But then it's like she came here and she's like, actually, I do want to be 
a vessel for storytelling. I do want to be someone who steps in front of the camera and tells someone's story that needs to be told. I do want to be that. And so when she feels those things, she stepped into it and she's been living here in LA and doing her thing. And what's beautiful about that experience is she said the reason that she chose this life is because she knew that she could do something for her country and for her culture that it didn't even need to be, you know, she doesn't need to be Angelina Jolie. It's like simply showing people that you can come from where I come from and create the life you want. You can have the spotlight. You can be an individual. You can be unique. You can be original. And it was so beautiful. Like she said that she's here to raise the vibration of her country and of her culture. And that's why she chose that life because she said that she was done living her human lives. She didn't need to be here, but she wanted to be here. So she chose to be in a place that would really like benefit from her story. And I'm like, oh my God, that was just so beautiful. And aside from that, now, before I had put her under hypnosis, she told me about this incredible experience that she had on psychedelics, where these blue beings came to her, they took her somewhere, they showed her who she is, that she was one of these blue beings. These were the blue beings, they said, that were like the fifth dimensional beings, that that was her real family. They did say that. So those beings that came to her on mushrooms was her real soul family back where she's from and that they're so proud of her for being the one to come here and to take on this task and she's killing it and everything's working out and it's falling into place. And that's the number one thing that really comes through in most of these sessions is they are like, trust us, everything is working out. Please don't stress it. It's all going to work out for you. Don't worry. And so with that, in part of one of her psychedelic experiences, she had this incredible life-changing experience where very briefly, and I could never do it justice the way that she does, but basically after she had this experience with these like four blue beings, this, she said this presence came and she said it was like a white light that was golden. Like she said it was gold at the same time it was white light. Like it was just incredible she was crying telling me about how beautiful this white light was and she just said it was like she's never felt so much love and pureness and wholeness and connection and she was like crying telling me this experience then she said that you know after that experience she had gone to a party a couple days later and she was talking about it with the there was a rapper at the party she was talking to him about it and he was like yo you know what that is that's christ consciousness and so she told me that story beforehand. And that was one of the questions that she wanted to ask under QHHT, like, what was that experience? Um, can you explain it? Because it was completely profound, but she couldn't even hardly put it into words. Because she just kind of said like this light came over like a horizon and she just, she doesn't know the horizon of what, but the way that it came over, she said it was just, she was, hysterical crying and trembling when her friend saw her, but she said it was a beautiful experience for her. But literally she said her body was like convulsing on the outside to other people seeing it. And so she literally has this experience under hypnosis. I want to ask, and like I told you, I have the mic and I'm like, you know, and so I ask, like, what was that experience that she had with the white and golden light? And oh my God, she just gets this like huge smile on her face. Like even though her eyes are closed and she's, you know, in like a meditative state, she just like lights up and she's like, she's like, well, it is who she thinks it is. And I'm like, with the mic, I'm like, well, well who does she think it is? <laughs> because what she told me before was that it was Christ consciousness is what she was told it was. So I'm like, Ex excuse me, who, who was the light? And 
she's like, well, you know, it's just the way that you guys like perceive him is like he's unattainable, but he's not unattainable. Well, he's not really a he at all. He's, um, you know, he's available to us all the time. And she's not particular or was not really particularly like a very religious person, you know, in that sense, you know, uh, I think she was probably raised Catholic, but not like someone who was like very, you know, super into Jesus. And um, so I'm like, who, who? And I just like, remember, I was like, who is it? And she's like, well, Christ. And I was like, but I'm in the room alone. Her eyes are closed my leg is shaking and I'm like, like I'm having a podcast with the other side and I'm just like, (laughs) dude, what? (laughs) What? So that was crazy. That was one of the most exciting things that I experienced as far as her purpose. Um, Her purpose was to basically help people through laughter. And they said that she was going to do it through a new style of storytelling and that she was going to be very pivotal, pivotal into kind of like creating this other, sorry, this other style of storytelling. And with her acting and with her spiritual journey, we really see this happening. Like there's all the time, like we'll be talking and I'm like, this came up in your hypnosis session. Don't you remember? She's like, how do you remember everything? I'm like, don't you know, I'm like a freaking encyclopedia. I've got thousands of zip files in my mind. Of course, I remember everything that was said in your hypnosis session. That was like one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. And I've had a very cool life. (laughs) So yeah, you told me that it was Christ that you met. Okay. You think I forgot? No. So it's just amazing that similar with some of the stuff that came through that they said like this is going what's going to be her purpose and how she's going to impact and help people is going to be through storytelling in a very different way of storytelling and now i can see that happening as she combines her many many years of acting with all of her many years of spiritual development and really merging those things into possibly a new style of or just a different avenue for people to express themselves not saying she's going to create something like a new type of movie or books you know like books and movies are forms of storytelling but actually you know there's a lot of different styles of storytelling and that's more so what i think it's developing into and i'm super excited for it and when she really is doing that stuff i will share it with you guys okay my last one so this one is really cool um there's different things and like i said i don't want to share too 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 much about people's personal lives. But I do want to share uh, one of the experiences that someone had where they actually did go into a past life. So this is another one of my, you know, talented, amazing friends. I'm very lucky that I did this all on, mostly on people who were spiritually advanced and aware. Um, I did do it on some people who were not, and I didn't ask their permission for, to share their story, so I won't. But Um, it was a different experience. It wasn't the same type of information coming through, like where these people are saying that they came here to basically help others and teach others. Now, the other people who did it that were not like, and not saying that they're not spiritually advanced, but they don't really delve into these topics. They, you know, did this kind of out of pure curiosity, as opposed to like part of their spiritual journey, like some of the other people were doing it. Now, what I noticed the big difference between all of those other people is their purposes were not as much about helping others. It was more about their own experience. So all of the people that said things like they were here kind of like projecting into this reality and things like that, even the first one, my ex, his was to help people as well. Um, And nobody's perfect though, you know? And so what I thought that was really interesting too, is that the people who were very much into this stuff, all of their purposes had to do with helping people by helping people through, you know, helping people by being the light, helping people by, you know, um, 
through laughter, through storytelling. You know, there's many different ways to help people. A lot of times people, when they hear that everyone's purpose is basically to help someone, they kind of retract because they don't want to do charity. They don't want to help the homeless. They don't want to see suffering animals. There's many ways to help. The, not the only way to help is the by the book ways of charity. Um, there's so many ways to help. By sharing your story helps. So there's a million different ways. But I did notice that the people who were not um, had purposes like to learn to relax or to enjoy their life. Other people had an experience, the purpose was to have fun, literally a purpose to have fun in this life. Wow. So we're all here experiencing different things, which is why we really can't judge anyone else's journey because if your purpose is to have fun, then don't try to force that person to be a social media justice warrior, okay? Let them have fun. They fucking chose this life to have fun. Let them live. That's why I think we can't really project onto other people because we really don't know what that soul's purpose was, you know? So, and I do have to say, the person who said that their purpose was to relax, they were the hardest working person. Oh, it killed me that I was like, oh, the purpose is to relax, honey. You gotta quit your job. I'm sorry. <laughs> Literally, when that one person came up from hypnosis, I'm like, it's time to leave the job. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> not saying she was not gonna work at all, but the job that she had at the time was just not good for her lifestyle. So I'm gonna tell you about this experience because um, I think it's gonna be very relevant to people watching. So this is my friend who, she is um, an energy practitioner. She is a Reiki practitioner. Um, she also, uh, she's multi-talented and faceted. She's great. Um, but she also has always had like psychic abilities. And from the first time we met, we really talked about that, that when she was younger, she did have issues with seeing ghosts and people who had passed and things like that and also receiving messages and stuff and that it had scared her a lot in her life and that she was not really comfortable with it um and that was something that we had already discussed with each other so when we put her under and she goes to a past life she basically like kind of looked like a pilgrim uh not saying she was like in america but she was dressed like that like what are the puritans is that what they were that's how they dressed. Like, you know, the bonnet, the like black outfit with the white apron thing, you know, it was that type of thing. So she found herself in that body, but the, the ground that she was on was like wooden slates or whatever. And so as we start to dig into this past life, she finds out that she's on a ship, um, not an alien ship, like a pirate ship. And it's a long, 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 long time ago. And basically, uh these people these were like pirates she didn't call them pirates she described them as like these burly just chauvinistic horrible men um these just horrible beastly men um and that they were all on this ship together and that basically and i asked like well how did you get here how did you get on the ship and so then she regret like regresses to the point where basically she was kind of like a like a concubine prisoner trafficking per victim but you know back in the day that was completely freaking normal for people to do that stuff so she was basically like owned by like something like a bar keeper or like an innkeeper there's like some type of business or something near a dock that like owned her and that business traded these pirates for something and gave her to these pirates as an exchange and now she was living on the ship as like the girlfriend of the captain and she had some psychic abilities and she was afraid to let people know about this stuff and i think that had something to do with the fact of how she became a prisoner to begin with well, prisoner, you know, <laughs> personal prisoner. Um, and so she basically, at some point, some guys on the ship realize that she kind of has like some type of abilities. And I 
think it was like weather or something like she knew some weather was coming. Um, this also was in 2020. So my mind is not fully clear. I remember a lot of the other stuff, but sometimes the past lives had a lot of smaller details. Um, but I think it was weather or something that she knew certain weather was coming and said something. And then they were like, oh, she's a witch. And they basically humiliate, torture, do all of this horrible stuff to her. And then they hang her overboard and drown her off the side of the boat. And she said they were all just drunk and horrible. And, you know, her telling about the weather was to help them to save them anyway. So she was very traumatized by that life, but it really explained why she had been so scared of her spiritual experiences, why she was so afraid when she did communicate with ghosts or receive messages. And now that was something that came through from her higher self as part of the reason why they showed her that life. And they also wanted her to know that she's always received these messages and these messages can be helpful. Um, but, you know, she's still holding the trauma of the time when people were not ready for that information. So it was really interesting because they said that she can help a lot of people in this life with the messages she receives psychically. And they can also, um, she can help people who've passed to finish crossing over the people who are still kind of in between in limbo in, you know, and, you know, I did a video on my soul series about that. And I also did have a video on my YouTube uh, comp compiling whenever I've talked about ghosts on TikTok. And they say that the person doesn't stay a ghost for that long, but some people do need help transitioning and she can help transition them. Uh, also, there was an alien thing that came up. One of her questions was, she thinks that there was an alien in her room. Was that an alien? And they said, yes, they said it was. And she also can receive messages from them. So if she wants to step into her role of receiving messages, these things are all waiting and available for her. And um, another weird thing that she asked before I get into the, the messages, she had a weird question, and this is just what I want to sh share about some of the really interesting things that come through. She had this bizarre question, but we asked it anyway. She said, why do sometimes I feel like my teeth are not mine? And she's like, I know how crazy that sounds, but sometimes I feel like my teeth are not like supposed to be in my mouth. And I'm like, okay, sure, we'll ask it. Because you never know. So when I asked that question, she's there under hypnosis, laying on the moon pod. And she's like, ah! this laugh that she lets out. It was hilarious. Oh my God. And I'm like, there once again with the mic, I'm like, what is it? What is it? And she's hysterical laughing, like literally crying. And she's like, ah. she's like, oh my God. It's just that I've had so many lifetimes where I lost my teeth. And she's like, this is probably the, like the oldest I've been in my life that I still had all my teeth. And she's like, that's why I've lived so many lifetimes that she's like, I'm not used to having teeth. So that was really hilarious and bizarre, but it just, I just wanted to share that because sometimes we might feel these really bizarre, weird things about our body that could totally be connected to uh, our soul's journey and past lives of getting here. And I wanted to finish this out by talking about um, my friend who receives the messages that we're talking about. So she, after this, did Reiki on me. And this was probably the end of 2020 or maybe the beginning of 2021. Yeah, I believe it was like December of 2020, but I might be a little off with the dates there, but it was a while ago when she did a Reiki session on me after this. Now it was so interesting. Every single time that she placed her hands, not touching me, but just above the body, over my stomach on the top here, the candle in the room ca cackled, like <laughs> And I noticed it, but it was silent. Apparently she was noticing it too. 
Um, we did the session. I felt great afterwards because she gets messages. She was like, well, I wanted to tell you that some things came through during, uh, like, do you want to hear them? And she was like, okay, first I'm, sh I don't know if you noticed that every single time I passed over your upper stomach, the candle started cackling loud, crackling. And she's like, I don't know if you noticed that. I'm like, yeah, I noticed. And she said, okay, I don't want to alarm you, but there was something that came out of your stomach. I'm like, what? She's like, I don't know. It was some type of energy. She said, it came out of the stomach, stood next to me and was looking over your body next to me. And she said that she just told it like, she's like, nope, that's okay. You're all done here. Thanks so much. You can leave now. No, no, no. You could leave now. You're not welcome here anymore, but thanks so much. Thanks for being. And uh, I was like, dude, I felt it because what was crazy is before I went to her apartment, when I was driving over, I set the intention without telling her um, that I wanted to get rid of my limiting beliefs. And what was crazy is that I do feel like my limiting beliefs were in my solar plexus. and it's so interesting that it was like, that's what I said I wanted to like remove. And then she was like, literally like if something came out of your stomach and I don't think it was, you know, obviously any type of conscious entity, you know, I think it was probably a concentration of limiting beliefs and whatnot. Um, but there was a lot of interesting things now that was, yeah. Okay. Maybe it was the beginning of 2021 actually. And she said, okay, I don't want to alarm you, but she said, I saw you were in a hallway of what looked like an insane asylum and it like, like a haunted demonic insane asylum. I'm like, oh, okay, no, no, not scary at all. Keep going. And she, so she's like, and you were running through the halls afraid and you were trying to escape. And she's like, it wasn't like you were a patient. You were just there and you were trying to run. And she's like, you're trying to get from different doors. You're running down the hall. But then she's like, at the end of the hallway, there's two double doors with an exit sign and you push through them. And on the other side of these double doors is beautiful. It's everything and more that you want in life. But she's like, your guides wanted me to let you know that there's like this really scary time that's coming. So I was like, hmm, because my life had been, I've had a lot of struggles in life. However, in the last couple of years, I've been good. Um, that was right up before, you know, what happened last year um, with like things happening. Like obviously, really freak things happen with my car, but like, I've been safe. I've been good. I've been, there's been things that happen, but at the end of it all, I've been fine. So I feel that overall in the past. So when she said that, I was like, well, uh, I guess that's okay. You know, it's been a while. I've been on a good streak, like sure things happen, but like, I've also been totally perfectly fine. So regardless of things that happen, um, I've been good. And I'm like, okay, so I can accept that, that on the other side of this journey, there's something beautiful. Okay. I can deal with a creepy hallway, uh, insane asylum. <laughs> uh, and so then some time passed and I was like, Hmm, that was interesting. She kind of said, I feel like she said that it was like maybe like six months away or something like that. And I was like, Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, as time passed, I kind of thought, and I was like, wow, you know, that never really came to light. And, uh, little did I am, little did I know, <laughs> because the stuff that ended up happening with my ex, you know, that's the thing when people have these crazy spiritual experiences is that they also oftentimes simultaneously are having mental health crises on top of a spiritual experience. Not saying all spiritual experiences are mental health crises and not saying all mental health crises are spiritual experiences, but there are times where people are having both. Um, and that is what I believe happened in the case of my ex. 
So looking back now, that happened. If I'm around, if I'm, I'm not sure of the time that session happened. But that session was probably about seven or eight months before everything went down. And it was like a creepy hell asylum that I was afraid of and trying to run and escape from. But then when I did escape, there were so many beautiful things on the other side uh, that I didn't even know, like building this audience to talk about important things that are helping all of us evolve spiritually, myself included. So yeah, so I really feel like her message to me also came full circle and when I think about it. And especially, like I said, today is a day that I'm reflecting on it a lot because this was like pretty much the day of the exorcism and everything. And, you know, I don't think the exorcism went well. But it's pretty interesting how everything turns out. So the moral of the story, guys, <laughs> um, is... You could have things happening with your body that are connected to past lives. Now, QHHT is a great tool for this, but it's not the only tool. You can experience all of these things in meditation. And I highly encourage you to. I encourage you to meditate and really set your intentions and do that. A QHHT session can be pretty expensive. Um, when I did it, it was like $500. Um, to me, it was a very worth it experience. Um, but I had many worth it experiences before I ever paid that. So all I had, as you can see, if you go to my other video about my past lives or the astral projection, I had a lot of those experiences without doing QHHT. So if it's not something that's in your budget, like I said in previous videos, go and do the Brian Weiss past life regression on YouTube. There's many different types of past life regression that you can do through meditation. You can also set intentions and visualize and do visualization meditations, um, do inner child meditations, do past life meditations. There's so many things that are available to you on YouTube. So don't feel like the only method is to see a practitioner because that's only one thing. And personally, I do think when people always go to practitioners, sometimes they're disempowering themselves. Um, not always. It is important to have a balance because sometimes you can't do things your own on your own, but it is important to like practice those things on your own, you know, practice meditating or trying to visualize or experience or clearing your mind or having inner child uh, meditations, visualizations, look up different visualizations and just work on that and things will come to you. And you'll see that there's a lot of experiences in your life that will directly relate to the things that come to you. And also the last moral of the story is like when people give messages for you, psychic messages, I'm not saying like psychics in the street because that can tend to be a little scammy. However, when like say someone that you love and trust kind of gives you a bit of information and that information was very like perfect to the time that you're in, sometimes they're receiving that without knowing from a higher place. Um, and they're just able to receive that information. So take those things to heart, you know, not stuff like, oh, something bad's going to happen to you, even though that is kind of the story that I said. Um, but even if it is something like that, like, oh, you're going to have a tough time coming up. Um, don't be afraid of it. Just remember that like literally things get removed from your life because they need to. And if you look at what happened with all of these stories, um, my fairy friend, there's things that are happening that she was told were going to happen during that hypnosis session. My friend with the, you know, raising the vibration of her country, that is already her destiny to do that. So she doesn't need to stress about anything because it will come to fruition. It will come to light. With me, with my experience, how my friend said that at the end of that crazy, evil, insane asylum hallway, I would get through it and that there would be like the most beautiful life for me after. And that's still falling into place now. But you really just have to know that like the universe has a bigger plan and we can manifest the things that we want, but there needs to be a level of or something better. 
So when you manifest what you want and you're pulling your life that you want towards you, also leave it up to the universe with, I want this and this and this or something better. You know, let the universe sometimes stick a wrench in your plan because when you come out on the other side, you couldn't even imagine what was possible. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to try to be more consistent on doing these type of videos. Um, this was so much fun. I love sharing this type of information. And um, let me know in the comments if there's like any other type of videos like this that you want me to do. Uh, thanks so much. And I love you guys. Oh, and uh, I have to address this. Um. <laughs> Okay, so this, my friend just gave it to me. Um, it was like, you know, like a, a joke gift because this is my keychain. <laughs> because I have this super obnoxious keychain because I don't have a spare key. I don't have a spare key to my car, a spare key to my apartment. No, I have a giant keychain. <laughs>